G'day, I'm Vince and welcome to another Linux Terminal Love where we discuss interesting tips and tricks that will help you along the way to becoming more familiar with the terminal. Today we'll be taking a look at a very versatile and powerful application in XRNR, which I believe stands for X Resize and Rotate. What prompted this video was that recently I'd seen a couple of questions asked by different users in various telegrams and forums that I hang out in. These people were having difficulty in setting up their multi-monitor displays. They were coming across problems whereby the included graphical tools in their chosen desktop environment were failing them, either failing to detect monitors or the correct native resolutions. Other people were having trouble with starting out trying a tiling window manager, such as i3 or BSPWM where graphical tools may not be available and you need to know the commands to set your multi-monitor screens up, which can be put into a script or configuration file that is run at startup or login. Now, before you guys say anything, I do know that there are graphical tools such as A, R and R. The back end of these tools is still X, R and R, but one of the questions I mentioned earlier was a person who still couldn't get ARNR to save the configuration on BSPWM Window Manager after a reboot. What we had to do was figure out the correct XRNR configuration for him so he could then put it into his config file of BSPWM so it would set it all up properly when he logged in. So this demonstrates where knowing the terminal can indeed be very powerful and important. If you can set yourself up using the XRNR command, you never need to worry about which DE or window manager you might currently be running or wanting to try out. Of course, none of this is going to be of any use to you if you have a desktop environment that is running Wayland. However, many distros and desktop environments still use the X server for a graphical display, so this may still be quite relevant to you. To learn more about the XRNR command, here is its man page. Or of course you can open up your terminal and type man xr and r. Speaking of which, let's open up our terminal and get cracking. First let's close a and r and we'll open up a terminal. Let's get the font a bit bigger for you. The first thing to do is have a look at the help page which will show you all the options for xr and r. So xr and r dash dash help. So you'll get this big list of various options. The best way to show you what these all mean though is probably to show you some examples. The simplest thing you can do with XRNR is to run the command alone without any flags or options. So if we type XRNR, this will give you information about all your available ports, including the ones that are empty, as well as details about the displays that are currently attached to them. So here in my setup, you'll see that I currently have a display port on my graphics card, which is connected to a 1920 by 1200 monitor uh, running at that resolution and 60 hertz. I have an HDMI port, which is currently disconnected. I have a DVI port, which is connected to another display running at 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. It's actually quite important to run a plain XRNR command first before you do anything else. You need to be able to identify your displays essentially by the ports that they're plugged into as well as possibly their compatible resolutions. So if you were to examine my setup as an example, the way that I need to identify my displays is by these names here. So display port dash zero, HDMI dash A dash zero, which is currently disconnected and DVI dash D dash zero. And taking note of what the maximum resolutions that you better use are. The ways in which we use this information will become much more apparent in a minute when we want to set up our own custom display configurations, which I'll show you. Another common reason for needing XRNR is setting up your resolution if it's not being detected properly, such as in a virtual machine. You know what I mean when you start up a virtual machine and you get a tiny little window. All you need to do then is open up a terminal window and type XRNR dash S for size and whatever size you like, typically 1920 by 1080. The next thing we can do is have a look at some examples of setups. 
to try to understand how all the syntax works and get some idea of how powerful this tool is. I've prepared a few diagrams to show you. So these are actually examples of some of the XRNDAR commands that I've put into place. This first one is a simplified version of the current one that I use on my desktop, which I'm recording on at the moment. You will recall that I have two monitors of differing resolutions, but I've simplified it here by making them the same. Let's examine this command. So after the XRNDAR command, we have dash dash output, which then allows you to identify which display you want to set the next options for. I have put the auto option here, which will detect the native resolution of the display and turn it on. And for argument's sake, let's say that's 1920 by 1080 here at the moment. Uh, I've set this display also to be primary. And this is required in i3, which I run to tell it where to put my system tray. Next, we identify the output DVI D0. I have also made it auto, so it detects its native resolution of 1920 by 1080. What I've also done here is told XRNR to put this display to the right of the first one, which was display port 0. And this is what the displays would look like sitting in front of me. The next two examples are ones that I use for my laptop, which I commonly will connect an external display to. So here we have XRNR. I then identify output DP1, which is the external monitor connected to a display port on my laptop. I have then told XRNR to make my external monitor have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is its native resolution. Otherwise, when you first connect the display port monitor into the laptop, it will just mirror the laptop's resolution, which is actually smaller at 1600 by 900. Then I've told XRNR to put this output, DP1, to the right of my laptop, which sit, usually sits on my desk next to the monitor, roughly in this position. However, this is where my next example comes in handy. Because my monitor is slightly elevated off the desk with its stand, and my laptop normally sits flat on the desk because I don't have a laptop stand, I actually use this example here for my day-to-day -day use. Uh, so when we tell XRNR to identify output EDP1, I also tell it to make it primary, so it will show me the system tray in i3 on that monitor. I then identify output DP1, which is the external monitor. I tell it to display a resolution of 1920 by 1080 using this mode option, but I also tell it to position itself in a certain position. And this is where this is fantastic, this tool. You can tell it to, instead of be just simply on the right of EDP1, which is on this example here, I've told it to be at a position which is at 1600, which is to the right here on the x-axis, and told it to offset it by a negative 180 pixels on the y-axis, which moves this DP1 display virtually upwards a little bit. So now when I move my mouse across my monitors, it will actually track properly rather than skipping and jumping or getting stuck in various places because of the different resolutions. There are other examples of multi-monitor setups which you can find here in the ArchWiki multi-head web page. If you go down a bit you'll find them here. This is one of the best ways of learning how to use XRNR which is by examining some examples. Once you've played around with the command and figured out exactly what your setup should be, you can then put it into your configuration file of your chosen window manager, or put it into a script that you can execute at login. There is an alternative way of having it set up automatically by putting it into your xorg configuration, as shown here, which should work in any distro, not just Arch. However, I usually just find sticking it into my config file of my window manager or using it in a bash script much easier. There you go. I hope you've learned a little something today. I do have plans to have a follow-up video to this one that explains how you can set custom resolutions or undetected resolutions of your monitor, which was another question I'd come across in some groups and forums. 
I'm trying to get more videos out, but real life has been getting in the way lately. Thanks so very much for watching everyone. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to get notified of future videos. Leave me a question, comment or suggestion down below. Bye.